Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to try to make the Mercedes CLA 250 a little less terrible. Behind me, the dirty CLA 250 is back from the initial hill climb test that I took it on. So if you saw my other onboard video, you know I took it to the Mary Hill event and ran it up and down the hill a few times and got a general feel for the car. So when I purchased this car, I wasn't shopping for a Mercedes. In fact, I haven't been a huge fan of a lot of the recent BMWs and Mercedes offerings because they are very geared toward older drivers and sort of a strange blend of luxury and cost effectiveness until you get into the very upper brand ranges. Now, the CLA 250 happens to have some interesting specs on paper, and I think it happens to be a fairly visually appealing car compared to other offerings in the price range, which used, this car places itself in competition with a new Honda Civic. In place of what you would get with a basic Honda Civic, this car is all-wheel drive, has a turbocharged inline four-cylinder, and has a lot of luxury features you simply wouldn't get with a Civic, but also with the sort of prestige that comes along with the German badging. Now, these cars are far from perfect. In fact, they are a terrible driving car out of the box. The two biggest flaws that I've encountered so far with the car is the throttle response, which is atrocious. The drive-by-wire system simply does not let you feed in throttle fast enough to make the car behave in the way you would like. The second big flaw I see with the system is the transmission. And now, the transmission is a dual-clutch system that shifts very quickly and should be very capable, but when you actually drive the car, it is in the realm of idiot savant slid almost entirely to idiot. The gearbox is never in the gear you want and is extremely slow to give you the gear you want coming off of a stop. And I'm sure this is because most of the car's package is tuned toward 80 year old retirees who they don't want driving to the front of a Denny's. But in the situation of a person who drives performance cars on the regular, this is a horrible feeling to have as if the car's bogged in quicksand until suddenly it's extremely sharp shifts kick in. So the first focus will be fixing this throttle response. Now, I don't want to entirely remap the drive-by-wire throttle system or replace all of the computer systems on the car. So what I'll do first is I will use a system like this, which is a sensitivity adjustment module that goes in line to the throttle pedal to fool the current system into thinking the throttle is more responsive than it is. So let's go ahead, open this up, and see what we're working with. So the unit I've chosen to use here is the Pedal Chip X. I don't actually know that there's any other pedal chips, and I don't know much about this brand in particular, other than it states that it's made in Germany, and one particular feature with it is that unlike other units, you can interface with it with a USB and do some advanced programming. Uh, it states that it's made in Germany, but it shipped out of Turkey and then went through Germany, so I'm not entirely sure that the production actually happens in Germany, but it had pretty good reviews, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Inside the box, you only have two items of any interest. You have the unit itself, which is essentially this small microcontroller unit attached to a wiring harness, which interfaces with your throttle pedal, and the instructions for installing said unit into the car, which the instructions consist of interfering with the throttle pedal, plugging it in line, finding somewhere to stick it. Now, what I'm hoping to do is find a way to route the cabling for this through where the ashtray would be in the car to keep it up where I can easily see it and get to it, but if not, I'll just stick it on the underside of the dash. So let's go ahead, get under the dash, and see what we can work with. Now that I have everything where I need to be, all I need to do is hook it up to the car. So let's go ahead and make it happen. And as if by magic, it's in the car. No sweat, anybody can do it. So now let's go ahead and try to test this out. Piece of shit. One eternity later. Now that we have this plugged into the car, we should be able to give it a test. So let's go ahead and fire up the car and see if it works. Mm -hmm. 
So the car is dead cold, so it's idling really high right now. But I have no check engine lights. Throttle works. So as the car warms up and the idle comes down, let's go ahead and play with the different settings on the responsiveness of this. So first, let's turn it off and see how the throttle responds. Now I'm going to turn it on and step on it the same amount. The pedal chip is installed in the car. Now, right off the bat, I can notice quite a difference. If you have it turned all the way to the maximum and you put that thing into sport, you will notice the jumpiness of the throttle now. And I quite like that. It is much more how I would expect uh, a more tightened up uh, cable driven car to feel as opposed to these drive by wire squishy cars. Now, on daily driving in comfort mode, you probably won't notice a whole lot other than just a slight sharpness to the throttle if you keep it turned up a little bit. But having that variability in settings is quite nice. I actually found I, after driving it for a few minutes, I had it down several dots, like three or four from the maximum setting, just left it there, and it was good enough for most of the driving. If I can get this car up into a dyno, I would be curious to see if I can see the difference on how quickly the power is applied between the different settings of throttle, or if I could get an OBD2 connection set up to it to where I could show you the TPS sensor readings based on the distance the pedals traveled. I'll try to do that in some future video. So if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.